ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد عباد الله all praise due to Allah and his praise and blessings and peace be upon our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family his companions and his followers until the day of judgment i bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his last and final messenger my dear brothers and sisters as we all know we as a human being made of two components Number one is the body, and the second one is the soul. And there is no doubt that many of us so aware and have so awareness about their body, about their physical body, and making sure that they stay healthy, they nurture their bodies, they take care of it, when there is a sign of you know, disease or illness that we immediately try to deal with this in the proper way. But so many times, we don't pay as much attention to what really makes us humans, which is that soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us. That soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have honored us with and He made it Subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessed in the body of each and every one of us which is something inside you but you still with all the knowledge that we have with all the advanced technology that we have in medicine and otherwise we still have very little information if there is any through that physical means about the nature of that soul as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا That this soul, the matter of this soul belongs to my Lord. And the knowledge that you have given is very little. Can you imagine something inside you and you still couldn't figure it out? Exactly what it is. It is an important reminder for us today as we started the month of Ramadan to think about this soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us and to make sure that we care for it to be good, healthy and connected to the source of its life which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many diseases attack the bodies and attack the souls as well. And today I just want to point out one which is so dangerous because it's a silent killer. It's like the program we have in this masjid every Friday. If you're not aware of, you check your blood pressure okay, every Friday and you see how you progress during the month of Ramadan. Because as you might know, your blood pressure is a silent, you know, uh, uh, vital things in your body. You don't feel it, but when it hits you, it hits your heart. And the same thing with this disease that I want to talk about today. It's very silent. People don't pay attention to it. You don't even notice it. But when it hits you, it hits you so hard. And in that time, there is no much you can do except the mercy of the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is al-ghafla anillah. That the person became heedless. The person became not aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the person have no self-awareness about his Lord and about Allah azza wa jal. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ All who you believe, don't let your wealth, 
Don't let your family distract you from dhikrullah, from the remembrance of Allah. In another way, in another word, that being involved in this daily activity that we have to do can lead to distract us from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't think about Him, you became in a state of ghafla, of being not aware of Him. Because life can suck you in very easily. And the problem when you get out of it, you get out of this basically a circle or black hole, you get out at the moment of your death, when you depart from this dunya. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ مُحْدَثٍ إِلَّا اسْتَمَعُوهُ وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ لَاهِيَةً قُلُوبُهُمْ وَأَسَرُّ النَّجْوَىٰ the time of their account has approached for the people. While they are, heed, while they are in heedlessness, turning away, no mention comes to them. A new mention comes to them from their Lord, except that they listen to it while they are at play. ذك محدث يعني شيء جديد يأتي مرة بعد الأخرى. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initiate things that it will remind you of Him. And one of it, the month of Ramadan. It just that shocked your system. That you don't eat, you don't drink. But it's not only about the eating and drinking. It's about this soul to be connected to Allah. It's about this heart to be soft. It's about your relationship with Allah to, ch to be changed. That's the whole point. There is still people in Ramadan, nothing much change in their life. The only change in life, there may be sleeping arrangement, maybe their you know, uh, food habit, just even the habit of eating, it just change only the hours, but not the quantity. Some people really, it, what you wait, somebody from your family died, got sick, fun from your friend lost job. You yourself, somebody in your family or someone that you love, have major things happen to them. When this will wake you up, when this will really reconnect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more, it is unacceptable for a believer. We're not talking to people who don't believe in Allah, don't believe in the day of judgment. It's unacceptable for one of us that days goes by and he never pause for a moment and think about what will happen to me when I will be put on my grave. When I will, you think it is far, it can be much sooner than what you think. I personally know two individuals in the last six months, in the last six months, they were diagnosed and died. In a matter of six months. They diagnosed with the disease, then they die. And they were very healthy before that. One of them died yesterday, rahimahullah ta'ala, in Egypt. One of the father of one of my friends, who was very healthy, just show him in, in, in Turkey not a long time ago. Less than a year. Seeing his pictures, very active. So if we think, and death does not discriminate between young, old, Healthy, not healthy. Because this is something every one of us will go through that. It's the ghafla. It's when you never think about that moment of your life when it comes to an end. When you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu anhu once passed by the graveyard and he stopped. And he said, Ya ahl al qubur all the people of this cemetery. أَمَا تُخْبِرُونَ خَبَرَكُمْ وَنُخْبِرُكُمْ خَبَرَنَا I wish that you can tell us what you experiencing. And I can tell you about us as well. And what happened to you after you died. After you died, I can tell you, your home occupied, sold. Was very hard. 
for a brother telling me when my father passed away, I collect all his dunya in a box. That's it. That's all my father's memories, PhD certificate, you know, a college, everything that he, you know, all these things were just a box. That's it. That's it. How many years he spent to get that degree, to do this, to do that? It became just a box, a piece of paper. You want something near you? Look at the thing that you accomplished 30 years ago. Your degrees, your high school diploma, your college diploma, your this, your this, your that. What's worth now? Not much. Comparing to what you felt about it at that time. And that's how the dunya is. It's subhanAllah, I could, it, it fits its name, dunya, daniya, min ad dunu. There's nothing of value. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if this whole life worth even the weight of a mosquito's wing, but it doesn't. That's why Allah doesn't care. He give it to, tho- to those who He loves and those who doesn't. Those who believe her and those who disbeliever, Because it's not worth, it's worth nothing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. Then Ali radiallahu anhu said, your family left you, your money distributed. And he said, as of the people of grave, if they tell us what they are now in, they will tell us, تَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ زَادِ التَّقْوَى They will tell us, make sure that you prepare yourself for this journey. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, take advantage of five before five. Your health before your sickness. Your youth before you became an old, an old age. And when you became old, you became limited even in mobilities. Your free time before you being so busy. And the most important is, and your wealth before a time will come when you don't have money. And the most important one is the fifth one. It is your life before your death. There are certain signs. If you see them in yourself, make sure that you need to deal with this. And as you look for a doctor to help you, maybe you should counseling for someone who can help you as well to change this status that you are in. If you notice that you don't, you don't have the enthusiasm and the excitement when the ibadah comes. Like Ramadan and the Salah, oh my God, I'm still going to pray, I'm going to read Quran. It is so heavy. Oh, I'm still going to go to the Masjid, still go to this. وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا they, when they stand up for salah, they are so heavy, dragging their feet. SubhanAllah, it's so heavy to go to the masjid, but it's so easy to go have fun and to do this and to do that. Somebody said, Sheikh, that's natural. Yeah, that's natural for those people who are, their heart is so dipped in the dunya. But it's not natural for true believers. It's natural that you love to do worldly things, to have fun. But it's not natural for the believer that he loves the dunya more than the akhir. That's not right. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the ibadah as a concept because here can be a tricky. You know what, Sheikh Walid, I don't like to pray behind you. I don't like your voice. That's about me. But I'm talking about as salah, not Walid, not Ahmed, not Kamal, not Muhammad. I'm talking about the ibadah in itself. You might have a reason not to like this particular, you know, uh, uh, performance. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the actual concept of ibadah. As Siddiq kana yusi Umar. Can you imagine Abu Bakr advised Umar? And he's telling him, Inna lillahi haqqan bil layli la yaqbaluhu bil nahar. Wa inna lillahi haqqan bil nahar la yaqbaluhu bil layl. There are certain duties for you in the night time. Allah will not accept it in the daytime. Which is your prayer, your salah, your qiyam al-layl, your ibadah, your dua, your istighfar. Spending time with your family. And there is time, certain duties in the daytime. Allah will not accept it in the night. 
If you have to work, you have to go to work, you have to do this, you have to do that. Everything it has been prescribed to you. If you notice that sins become something easy for you to do, it doesn't hurt you, it doesn't bother you. You always try to justify it. You know, it's just a small little things here and there. Who's immune from sins? Everybody commits sins. Yeah, everybody commits sins. Doesn't mean I go do it. When you see that this is became, that's a, a sign of heedless. Ghafla. Kan ibn Mas'ud yaqul, inna al-mu'min yara dhunubah kal jabal ala ra'sih. Wa inna al-munafiq yara dhunubah kal dhubab ala amfih. Yaqulu bihi hakadha. The believer see his sins like a mountains on the top of him. Why? Because Anna said, don't ever look at the size of your sins. Look at the size of the one that you disobeyed. That's make that sins look like a mountains. When Umar radiallahu an just he shows a, a little bit of objections to the idea of Sulh al Hudaybiyah, the, the treaty, when they said, We're not going to say from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. Say from Muhammad, not the Messenger. The Quraysh told him, If we believe your Messenger, ma qatalnak. And hatta in the common sense. They said, If we believe you're a Messenger, we'll not be fighting you. So write from Muhammad, don't write Messenger. So Umar got angry and stopped them. Then the Nabi looked at him and he said, Umar, back off. يقول Umar, عددت هذا ذنبا عملت له أعمالا كالجبال من الحسنات. Umar said, I consider that a sin that I made for it mountains of good deeds. Just to wipe it out. Because this heart, ma fiha ghafla, this heart is so self aware, have self awareness. He knows how serious this is. Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, yaqul, sami'tu al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, kullu ummati mu'afa, illa al mujahirin, wa inna min al mujaharati an yamal al rajulu bil layli, amalan thumma yusbihu wa kat satarahu allahu alayhi, fayakulu ya fulan, عملت البارحة كذا وكذا وقد بات يستره ربه ويصبح يكشف ستر ربه في البخاري ومسلم فذ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said that every ummati every one of my ummah mu'afa يعني will be somehow forgiven somehow protected from their sins except the one who make the sin in the night then basically come in the morning showing off, oh, I did this, and he posted, and he basically, and his social media, and talked proudly about it. If you notice that your heart, during the hardship, turned to other than Allah, that's a sign of hiddenness, ghafla. When things strike you, like last night, we were stuck in this place, some of us, because of the rain. Some of us, maybe, the water started rushing into their cars or they got stuck in the in the middle of the highway or you know or their kids are scared at that moment if no one think about you know making dua that oh allah allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna astaghfirullah astaghfirullah la ilaha illa allah al-alim al when somebody start making istighfar and making turn into allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of just turning to the ab when this is gonna finish the storm there is something wrong here when you hear about the bad news and you're in trouble, and you know the first thing that you think about is uh, other than Allah, there is a problem. When you see you waste your time and time has no value for you. That's one of the signs of Al-Ghafla. That's basically, as Umar ibn Aziz Sikana yaqul karima jameela, yaqul al-laylu wal-nahar ya'malani feek fa'mal feehima. Day and nights working on you, so work on, <laughs> uh, on them as well. They, day and nights taking away from your health, from your age, from every, and you losing every day. So make sure that the day that arrives, the new day, that you add to your good deeds. But if our 
all our day is just wasted, especially any uh, people waste most of their day sleeping and not doing much or playing and, you know, that's just wrong. Somebody was telling me that day, Sheikh, aren't you amazed by those people who keep saying, who the whole entire Ramadan, most of the day sleeping. Naimin to Ramadan. And at the end of Ramadan, they write message and they say, we're going to miss you, Ramadan. We're going to miss you. If you're going to miss it, go. Wake up and stay with Ramadan a little bit before he leaves. If you're really going to miss it. It is surprising. So these are signs when somebody, when, when, you, when you see them and you, that's something required from you to just to stop and to pause and say, hey, how am I going to deal with this? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'afiyan wa iyaakum in al-ghafla. وآثارها علينا في الدنيا والآخرة قل ما سمعت ما استغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد One of the main reason for this state to be in is when the heart is so attached to the dunya you have so much love you have so much investment in the dunya and very little investment in the akhirah. Because if you invest in something, all your thoughts, all your day, all your nights, all you know, your, 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 your money, your, 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 everything is about this worldly. It's okay to have the worldly life, but if you connect it to the akhirah, it became like, you know, like a means. As they say, dunya mazra'atul akhirah. This is like a, a farm. You plant the seed, you work on it to lead you. But the reality is, the problem is I have seen in my life, people so arrogant that they keep arguing and saying, to, oh, Sheikh isn't working ibadah, isn't going to job, is ibadah, is this ibadah. طبعاً, going to work is not ibadah. Going to work is work. Okay? But going to work with the intention to get money to support yourself and your family, that's a good intention, Allah reward you for it. But the ibadah is something defined by the sharia. The act of worship, it was defined by the sharia. But that's a good intention. That's a good deed. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your intention. But the reality is when these people say this, who, who just like to argue about this, the reality is if you look at their life, there is no real attach to the akhir. It's all about dunya. It's all about the love for the dunya. It's all about worry about the dunya. And that's what it is. They only know about the akhirah, about this life. And the akhirah, they know nothing. يقول حسن البصري والله لبلغ أحدهم من دنياه أن يقلب الدرهم بظفره فيخبرك بوزنه وهو لا يحسن الصلاة. You'll see one of those people when he put the coins on his, you know, nails and he flip it, he can tell you the weight and the how many carats this gold is and the silver, just by the look of it. And that same person don't know how to pray. Don't know how to make sujood sahu. Don't know how to make wudu according to the sunnah of the Prophet The same person. And that can apply to so many of us today. ذَرْهُمْ يَأْكُلُوا وَيَتَمَتَّعُوا وَيُلْهِهِمُ الْأَمَلِ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah threatened people, said, let them eat, let them drink, let them... And he make this whole dunya is about what? Eating and drinking, because that's what it is. On the end of the day. Let them be deceived by the amal. By the hope of this dunya and the attachment to this dunya. Until they woke up in the akhir. That shows you how much we don't know Allah. The more you know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, the more you can deal with this ghafla. وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah warn you about Himself. The more you know about His names and attributes, the more you, your, your relationship with Him will be different. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَنْ يُصْلِحَ أَحْوَالَنَا وَأَحْوَالَكُمْ 
وأن يغفر ذنوبنا وذنوبكم وأسأله عز وجل أن يرزقنا وإياكم حسن عبادته وحسن ذكره وشكره في هذا الشهر الكريم وأن يمسكنا بالإسلام والسنة حتى نموت اللهم اغفر لنا ولآبائنا ولوالدينا ولأرحامنا وذوي قرابتنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنا نسألك أن تيسر لكل على كل معسر يا حي يا قيوم اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اهد ضالنا اللهم اغني فقيرنا اللهم زد وبارك لأغنيائنا يا حي يا قيوم اللهم إنا نسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تصلح ذرياتنا أصلح ذرياتنا يا حي يا قيوم أصلح ذرياتنا يا حي يا قيوم أنزل بركتك ورحمتك على هذا المسجد وأهله يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام واحفظنا وجاليتنا وبلدنا من كل سوء يا أرحم الراحمين واللي علينا خيارنا وأبعد عنا شرارنا يا حي يا قيوم اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى وأن تؤتي نفوسنا تقواها وتزكيها أنت خير من زكاها اللهم الطف بعبادك المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم الطف بعبادك المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اجمع كلمتهم على الحق واللي عليهم خيارهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآله وقوموا للصلاة يرحمكم الله